everybody, so we sit here and I have a project share for you. This is for a swap. I am in with um, Harumi and I think her YouTube is Scrapper and Passion or something like that. Um, but I'll look it up and put it down below. So um, I had asked in a Facebook group that I am in now um, if anybody wanted to do a swap for Valentine's and she responded. So we planned on a Valentine's swap and um, she mentioned a heart shaped box which I did have a small one but then I remembered that I had this little mailbox. Of course it doesn't want to um, I did have this little one, but I didn't know if, if it was too small for what we were going to do. So then I told her I had this little mailbox, which came from Joanne's. So um, she get, let it left it up to me to decide what to do. So I decided with the mailbox because it was my last one and I wanted to just use it up. Plus, I love doing these little mailboxes. I think I've done one or two before. And I already kind of had in mind of what I could do with it because you can add much more to just, it's just the mailbox, it's like a, a cardboard or paper mache. So um, you can add so much more, you know, you put your little stand if you wanted to and whatnot. So that's what I did. And I actually had to create this stand. And I'm going to, just one second, let me pull out a piece so you can see what it looked like. <clears throat> Okay, now my last mailbox I actually used, I believe, one of those glass candlesticks from the Dollar Tree. But I didn't want to do that because I've used those candlesticks many times already as stands for whatever project. Um, and I don't know, I just wanted to do something different. So um, I remember that I had a pack of these plastic candlesticks which are shorter. And I think I got these from Miami. It's like a big package of 12 of these. So I, you know, I wanted to use it. Um, and then I thought, because it was only up to here, I thought, well, that's going to be a little too short. It's going to look kind of funny. What can I add to it to make it taller? And I broke out a lot of things. I took out wooden spools and, you know, I just kept looking and seeing what can I make or what can I add to it to make it taller. So I wanted something fun and whimsical. And I remember that I had a whole bunch of these plastic teacups. And they come with their little cups. And they come with a little lid, which I didn't use. And this is the original color. It's like a peach. Um, so I just went ahead and used that. Almost kind of like a shabby chic mad, mad, hat, mad hatter theme. Um, so all I did was I hot glued everything together and... Um, Gave it three coats of gesso on both this and the um, teacup so that I can, um, so it would cover up because this is translucent and then this was peach. So, and I first glued these together, um, gessoed them, and then added some of this pink. And the pink that you see here and here is from Folk Art, and it's the pink rouge pearl acrylic paint there we go so that's pink rouge I love that color and it almost looks metallic and the blue that you're seeing is from this one here which is it is a metallic color and I used this on my other project let's see where's the name of this ice blue I love these these two colors together it's almost like cotton candy so and you can see I haven't even cleaned this up now you're watching this video a lot later than I actually made this um, I made this last night which was the 24th of January and this isn't going out yet so you're not seeing it until she's gonna get it so again I stacked these painted them and then I took and painted this I did add couple coats of gesso first and again it is mod, um, paper mache <laughs> I took off the screw that holds this thing here painted it painted this and gave it a bit of a finish with some Inca gold metallic rub and this is the 
hematite. So I just rubbed a little bit, not a lot, in different places to kind of give it a little bit more of an older look. You can see the dark spots there. And then I rubbed on with my finger and my paintbrush, like a dry brush with the gesso just to tone it down again. So it's not just a, you know, pink box. And I didn't alter it heavily. I mean, I didn't add too many embellishments on the box. I really wanted you to see a box sitting on a teapot. Okay, and that's just the back side, I guess you can say, or the left side, and then that's the back. Again, I didn't um, add many embellishments. So um, the whole thing was first just sitting on this, the teapot, and then that. So I was kind of scared that maybe it would, you know, topple over. So I wanted to create, I wanted a base, a bigger base, and it also gave me more space to put my embellishments um, so what I did was this plaque here and I, let me get I think I have another one maybe maybe not I don't know let me see no I don't have another one uh, it came from work and I work in a bakery <clears throat> a lot of times when I order the toys for the bakery they send me um, the wrong thing and we can't use it so you know I might grab a couple of pieces from there and just take them home because we can't do nothing with it it's just gonna end up in the trash so this is actually a gum paste plaque and it feels like uh, maybe it's like a ceramic it's super hard and you really gotta hit it hard for it to chip um, the only thing with gum paste is you can't really paint it heavily you can do it like a dry brush like I did because once it gets wet it stays kind of like a wet tacky texture um, in the bakery you can airbrush it but with an airbrush it's very light like a mist of color um, but and I don't even know if you can see the design on here yeah you could see a little bit so again I just went with a dry brush with the pink and a little bit of the hematite you can see a little more of the pink on the sides. Just, just so you can see that there is a tray down there. And that gave me a nice sturdy base so this is not going to tilt. Like, you know, when you open it, you don't want it to tilt or whatever. So, and it gave me extra space to add my embellishments. I wanted to keep the embellishments a little down low instead of bringing them all up to the actual mailbox. Again, I wanted you to see that it is a mailbox. I didn't want to just cover it up with a whole bunch of stuff. So <clears throat> I just grab flowers from my stash, some wild orchid flowers, a few that um, I actually have in my grab bags in my shop, um, like these pink ones here I have in some grab bags. Um, I will be doing some flower grab bags once they come in. I just ordered some and I've been waiting on them. So um, all I did was try to cover up as much of this part with assorted flowers and uh, I think this one here it's one of these either this one or this one it's like a, a fabric flower came off of a spray which had this bow it had this um, loopy ribbon thing it had these sprays and it also had these and these leaves which has some blings in it and there's another one here so I took apart that and just used it as fillers everywhere all the parts of that one spray and you will see those sprays later on in my shop in some grab bags um, so you see how I just spread it all out so these sprays are really cool because you can just take them apart and use them you know and fill a whole project with just the one spray Okay, so this word love, it's a wood piece from Michaels. And that got painted with the pink rouge and dry brushed with gesso and a little bit of the Inca gold, not too much. And then here, this little instrument here, which I don't know the name of right now, was also like a transparent piece, plastic, and it was a Christmas ornament. Um, I had used similar pieces with 
a swap with Bonnie. We did Christmas um, swap, you know, just last month. And um, I pretty much did the same thing. I gessoed this. I just needed like three coats of gesso. And then just dry brush the pink. Um, I actually keep these pieces. I have more in my regular alterable stash, not in my Christmas stash, even though they're Christmas ornaments. Just because you could use them for anything. Um, let's see what else. On the teapot, once I had gessoed it, I did the pink on the raised flowers that you see there. It's on the front and the back of it. The handle and the spout. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, where was I? Just flipped my lid there. Okay, where was I? Okay, and I painted the spout. That's the back. You can actually see it better. Okay, and then here's the little cup that comes with this. It actually comes with two. I just put one and I did the handle. It's kind of hard to see in the pink. And then added a couple flowers inside. Okay, so that's the bottom. Now back up to the mailbox. The inside is finished. And what I did here was, this is to simulate a handle, but you can't really use it. I added a metal flower from Natasha's scrapbook corner. Comes in a pack like this, and I used this one. And this one is over here. So what I did with this is I took a brad. And this flower doesn't have a center that you can stick the brad through. Let me see if I can pull it out. It's this one here, and it's too small in there to actually, come on, it's too small to cut that middle and get a brad through there, so what I did was I split it in half, um, took the two parts, and then just hot glued it to the brad part, this part here, and then I left, you know, those brad feet hanging out and then I did make a hole through the cover here so that I can put it in and it's you know right there um, before I had done all of that I did paint these in the pink rouge both pieces and rubbed on some gesso I don't know if it's this camera is like really gotta get close there it is Okay, now it's just to simulate a handle. You can't really grab onto anything and pull it, but this really slips off easily. You know, opens and closes. Um, back to the side again. This is the part that goes up and down. So I actually use this this way to keep this closed, and once you move it, it will slip open. So um, this has a little screw and a nut on the back. So you just undo that, paint it and then put it back together really easy so I finished that top part with the other metal piece that looks like this see how you can you could just and I just use like a dauber and painted it I didn't even gesso it first I just put the color straight on a couple times and then brushed on the gesso on top of it and then here is another piece from Natasha's scrapper corner a bling with a pearl and then on the side just off to the side of this so that this could keep moving I added one of Natasha's scrapbook corner two two flowers in the white and then in the center is a pretty heart from uh, Prima is it Prima yes I don't have the packaging it's from Prima but um, Bonnie has sent that to me in um, I don't know if it was the last swap or the swap before that, but that and then this from another Prima package again from Bonnie. So I am using those. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Isn't that a cute angel? I forgot to uh, point it out earlier. He's actually holding a heart, but you can't see it because it's behind the E. You can kind of see his hand there. It was the only way that I can display him. Um, unfortunately, I had to cover his heart. So I think... That is it. Um, there's going to be more parts to this 
um, swap because I am going to make something to go inside. And part of our swap was also to make a card, a Valentine's card. So, anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye now.